In this video, we're going to cover Atari 2600 emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The Atari 2600 is the first gaming system that I ever played games on growing up. I have a ton of nostalgia for the system, and even today love going back and playing a lot of its games. That being said, playing the original hardware is actually a little bit difficult for me in this day and age, so I rely on emulation to do so. And I'm happy that that can be done on Xbox Series X and S. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's dive in. Now the first step to doing Atari 2600 emulation on Xbox Series X to S is to install RetroArch, so make sure to refer back to my How to Install RetroArch guide if you haven't done so already. Link to this will be in the description below. Now the one and only requirement to get Atari 2600 emulation up and running once you have RetroArch installed is to source some Atari 2600 games. They can be in bin format or A26 format or compressed into zip format, shouldn't matter. Now I have a huge selection of Atari 2600 games here that I actually got from the Atari Vault available on Steam. And I have a video on my channel showing you how to do just that if you are interested. Alternatively, you can resort to the shady parts of the net to get them, but as always, no download links will be given out on my channel, so don't ask, those comments will be deleted. Anyway, once you have your Atari 2600 games sourced, you put in your USB uh, flash drive or hard drive and drag your Atari 2600 games right on over. And once those have finished copying over, we're ready to take the flash drive or hard drive out of our computer, put it back in our Xbox, and load up into RetroArch. And from here, go ahead and boot into RetroArch. And once RetroArch is finished booting, we are ready to begin loading up Atari 2600 content. One method to do so is to go to Load Content, navigate down to where you have your Atari 2600 games stored. If they are on the internal SSD, you go to S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch folder, your Games folder, find your Atari 2600 Games folder, and then choose a game, choose the core, tell it to run. If you have your games on USB like I do, you go down to E, find your Atari 2600 Games folder, Choose a game, choose the core, tell it to run. Same deal. I don't prefer this method. I like to just make a game's playlist so I don't have to navigate so many submenus. So to do this, just back out to the main menu of RetroArch, go down to Import Content, and we're going to do a manual scan. From here, we're going to choose our content directory, so choose whether they're on your S drive or your E drive. Mine are on E, so I'm going to go in here and tell it to scan this directory. System name, we're going to choose Atari 2600 here at the top. Default core, we're going to go down to Atari and find Atari 2600 Stella. Make sure scan recursively is set to on if you have your games separated into subfolders. And if you have them zipped, make sure scan inside archives is on. And once you have those options set, go ahead and start the scan. And once completed, you will have a new Atari 2600 playlist entry here on the left. And then from here, you can just go in, scroll through, choose a game, press A on it, and tell it to run. Now, when it comes to Atari 2600, there are a couple of controls to be aware of. So going into our RetroArch quick menu, we could scroll down to controls, and we're going to go into port 1 controls. And from here, we could go ahead and scope out what all of the keys on our Xbox controller are mapped to for Atari 2600 emulation. So our D-pad is set to the Atari joystick, our B button is set to trigger, our A button is set to fire, our X button is set to booster, our back button is set to select, and our start button is set to re reset. Then we have difficulty selection buttons assigned to bumpers and triggers. And then our thumbsticks are set to toggle the color and black and white color options. Now these are important to note because Atari 2600 games did have multiple modes of gameplay, so you press your back button to choose between them. And then you press start to begin playing a game. But that's going to do it as far as basic Atari 2600 emulation setup is concerned. So from here, let's go ahead and talk about some advanced core setup within Stella. By going into our RetroArch quick menu, we can scroll down to options. And in here, our first option is console display. This is set to auto by default, but you can change the region of display output that it is attempting to do. So if you have NTSC games, PAL games, CCAM games, you can set that here. Next up, palette colors. This is set to standard, but you could choose between different color palette outputs here. I like standard personally. Next up, TV effects. This is really fun. This is basically a built-in shader for this core that can mimic different types of video signals, be it composite as video or RGB. 
and badly adjusted is similar to like an RF signal from back in the day. It's pretty fun to look at. It does make the games look really old school. It's pretty nice. I like it. But if you want the crispest display possible, just leave it set to off. Next, we have a couple of aspect percentages. I just like to leave them on uh, PAR, personally. You can manually adjust the aspect ratios if you want. Um, I don't see the need for it for myself, but your results may vary. Next, crop horizontal overscan. You can enable this to get rid of some garbage data in the horizontal overscan areas. Next, a stereo sound mode. You can get fake stereo output from your games. I kind of like it. It's grown on me. And next up, phosphor mode. This kind of uh, simulates old CRT uh, screen ghosting. So you can turn this on or off. It's set to auto by default. I like to have it on. And then you can choose the strength of the effect by changing the percentage. It's set to 60 by default, and I think that's a really good default setting personally. So as you can see, my, my little guy here is uh, kind of blending around. It just uh, looks neat. I think it's cool. Like, that's what it looked like on our old black and white TV. Like, mm, good stuff. And next up, we have a joypad sensitivity option. So you can set this really high, really low. If you feel like your games are not responding well, turn it up. If you feel like they're oversensitive, turn it down. But that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned for Stella. If you have any settings that you want to have set for a specific game, you can go into Manage Core Options and save them as a game options file, so that way they only apply to that one specific Atari 2600 game. And that's going to do it for Atari 2600 emulation on the Xbox Series X and S. Again, not a whole lot to this one. Put your games on your preferred storage method, load them up. Love it. As always, if you happen to have any questions about setting up Atari 2600 emulation on RetroArch, feel free to ask in the comments section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me the biggest of favors, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos go live on the channel, including new tutorials and other random nonsense that I like to make. It goes a long way to helping us keep the place growing and just a big thank you to all of you for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you could also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to helping us keep the place up and running and we're just so grateful to all of you who have decided to join up and back our channel and believing in what we do. Y'all are our champions, your rock stars, just a big thank you as always. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome. We'll see you back next video.